shared solutions allow us to find solutions in terms of power shares of differential equations we could not solve before. In this video, we'll encounter an example. Here we have y double minus 2x times y prime plus y equals 0. We have an x over there, so we do not have constant coefficients, so we have to think of something else. And that else will be a power share solution. So we assume if I can be written as power share cn times x to the power n and sum n from 0 to infinity, and we want to substitute this answer into our differential equation, so we need y prime and y double as well. First we compute y prime over here, and then we compute y double over there, that's standard. We plug in the y double and the y prime into our differential equation, and then we get this monstrosity over here. Now I want to turn this into one power series, of course, in order to compare coefficients left and right. So what do we do? Uh, for this term over here, we have x to the power n minus 2, we, so we said n minus 2 equals m, and then m sums from 0 to infinity. Uh, and for the other term, we can just take the x in, and we get an x to the power n, we have x to the power n uh, here as well, so we get for this term n minus 2, n c n times x to the power n. Then over here, we can rename in this power series over there, m equals n, and then we obtain one power shares just with x to the power n and a whole mess here with the coefficients equals zero on the right hand side. So on the left hand side we have a power series, zero times, uh, sorry, some constant times, uh, plus uh, some other constant times x, etc. Et et and on the right hand side we have uh, zeros. So we have a zero plus zero times x plus zero times x squared, etc. etc. However, we have a a relation between cn plus 2 and cn, which means again that the first two coefficients, uh, c1 and c2, or c0 and c1, are, are can be chosen freely, and then all the others are determined by the, this relation over there. Well, the relation looks again a bit awkward, but you see we again have the, this two step relation. Uh, c2 is given in terms of C0, C4 in terms of C2, C6 in terms of C4, and for the others as well, C3 given in terms of C1, C5 in terms of C3, etc. So we can again do the odd coefficients and the even coefficients separately. So let's start with an even, so take C0 free, then C2 equals, uh, with n equals 0, we get a minus 1 divided by 2 times 1 times C0. If we plug in n equals 2, we get uh, the C4, and then we get a 2 and minus 1, so a 3 divided by 4 times 3 times C2. And we do not cancel out the factor of 3 because we will see a pattern, and we will miss the pattern if we would cancel out the factors of 3 now. Then, uh, because we uh, end up with a minus 3 over 4 factorial times C0. Then the C6, uh, we find that by plugging in n equals 4, we get a 2 times 4 minus 1 equals 7 divided by 6 times 5 times C4. And C4 has a 4 factorial in the uh, denominator, so that gives us a 6 factorial and a 7 times 3 in the numerator. And then, so it's, it's clear now what happens in the denominator. You just get uh, a 2n factorial again, just like with the cosine series we saw before. But what happens in the numerator? Well, for that it's convenient to compute C8 as well, so plug in n equals 6 to get a C8. We get 2 times 6 minus 1, so an 11 in the numerator, divided by 8 times 7 times C6. So you see you get a minus sign again, and 11 times 7 times 3 times C0 over 8 factorial. And now you recognize, recognize the pattern. They all have a minus sign, they all have a C0, and they are all divided by 2n factorial. But now you also see what happens in the numerator. You get 3 times 7 times 11 times 16 times 19, etc., etc., et until you are at 4n minus 5. So that's the pattern of the even coefficients. So how do you spot such, such a pattern? Well, you compute a few of those coefficients, and eventually, uh, well, hopefully, you will recognize the pattern in the coefficients. And for the odd coefficients, just compute the first few first. So C1 free, and if you plug in n equals 1, you get a C3 equals 
2 and minus 1, so 1 over 3 times 2, so c1, okay, there we are. Then you plug in n equals 3, so you get c5 equals 2 and minus 1, so 6 over 5 times 4 times c3, so you get a, uh, again, don't cancel out the factors 5 because you could miss the pattern, so 5 over 5 factorial times c1, and uh, go on with the others, you get 9, 9 for c7, 9, o 9 times 5 over 7 factorial times c1, and for the c9 you get 13 times 9 times 5 over 9 factorial times c1. So you always have the c1. For the, c uh, for the odd coefficient c2 n plus 1, you always divide by 2 n plus 1 factorial, and then the numerator you get 5 times 9 times 11, and if you would go on times uh, 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 sorry, 5 times 9 times 13, and if you go, go on, times 17 times 21, etc., etc. So that's the pattern for the odd terms. So the general solution, how does it look like? It's now fully given. You have the even terms plus the odd terms, and if you would write down the first few terms for the even terms, here you have the first few even terms, and here you have the first few odd terms. So there you have your power uh, series. There you have the solution of your differential equation in terms of a power series. Uh, still, one question remains: Would this series converge at all? 